Market with Theo Trade. This is Don Kaufman. June 10th, 2020. Eight minutes left inside of the trading session with a wild bifurcation underway inside of the marketplace. Are you living on the bullish edge? I mean, come on. Markets have been up. They've been up again. But these bifurcations speak volumes. You know what? If you're unfamiliar with that terminology, when I mentioned bifurcation, hey, look no further than some of the futures contracts. Uh, the S&P futures, well, they're down a little bit on the day by the tune of about 0.3%. The NASDAQ is up about 1.6%. All right, the Dow futures are off by 0.7%, but the Russell, ah, it's getting hammered here by the tune of about 2.5%. People, we are just all over the place. And I'm actually going to dig into a little bit of this bifurcation here in just a couple of moments. But uh, really... On this evening's video, when I say, you know, are you living on the bullish edge? There are five definitive points that I would like to make for you this evening. Number one, today is Wednesday. It was an FOMC day. We got to hear from Jerome Powell. I think he saw his own shadow. That's it. Six more weeks of winter. Now, honestly, they didn't say a whole lot uh, other than, and for those of you that will geek out on you here for a moment, um, the Fed is not necessarily going to uh, start what they call yield curve control, and that is trying to peg the interest rates. To give you a quick example over here, if you take a quick glance at the TNX, the TNX is the 10-year Treasury Index. Now, the 10-year Treasury Index right now happens to be trading right in the tune here of, it says 7.48, but that is equivalent of about 0.75%. So that's what the 10 year is, what a yield curve control was, okay, and what it would be is to actually peg this particular rate right inside a very definitive range. And the Fed, although I think they're still considering it at this point, there is no yield curve control. All right. Did the market did them like it, not like it? No, because nobody really expected anything. The Fed didn't change, obviously, the Fed fund futures rate. In fact, the Fed did say, though, that uh, they're not even considering. In fact, the exact terminology they're not thinking about okay, and won't even consider thinking about a change in interest rates. They are actually mentioned 2022 before we may actually have liftoff from uh, zero Fed fund futures. Nevertheless, so the Fed came out again, as I say, it's, you know, you have to relate the Fed to Punks, Tony, Phil. They saw their own shadow. All right, they're going to hide now. Okay, we did get uh, quite a bit of volatility, though, of course, off the Fed. The initial Fed announcement, Jerome Powell starting to speak. Where are we right now? Well, we're massively unchanged from where we started the day. Nevertheless, let's actually dig into a little bit of some of the internals of the marketplace. As I was saying, Okay, there's this wild bifurcation and the bifurcation that you're seeing in the marketplace. I mean, it literally is a marketplace split unto itself. Let me actually take you further into the bifurcation because all I've been talking about week in and week out. Okay, sector rotation. I've talked about portfolio being long, short, and I can't stress that enough. Right. You're, I think, seeing some of that unfold right now for the first time. When I'm talking about, though, this bifurcation, uh, again, let's kind of get down to business here. Take a look at like the XLF. Don't worry about bringing up a chart over here. We don't need no stinking chart. OK, take a look at the XLF, which is down about uh, what? Three and a half percent and the rotation into what we term the monsters of tech. I mean, today there's literally a handful of products holding this entire market together. One of them happens to be Microsoft and Microsoft, huge bid. It's up about 4%. Apple, which is up another 3%. Netflix is out of the contest today. Facebook slightly down. Okay. Amazon continues to run. Google, not nearly as much action, but up on the day. Nevertheless, you're down to, again, four or five stocks. That's why we call them the monsters of tech people. And the rotation is directly into them. The rotation is out, again, of what? Of the financials and out in a big way, once again, of energy. Now, you'll remember from Monday night's video, okay, I actually said I whacked my energy position. I actually sold out of my energy position, and I am now in, okay, a short financials position and have been in a short financials position. Uh, if you're kind of curious, all right, in this short financials position, I'm, uh, I'm not going to sugarcoat this one at all. I just went out and actually sold a, uh, I just sold a thousand shares of the uh, XLF and I did that inside of a portfolio margin account. Nevertheless, the XLF happens to be down considerably today. Now this bifurcation, okay, inside of the marketplace, mm, what's it going to lead to? Well, one of the things that you have to really respect about the bifurcation is when you start to look at the auto expected moves, what's auto expected moves. All right. On a week to week basis, 
option markets are great at handicapping risk for the entire week. The lines that I'm actually drawing on your screen, okay, those are the edges of what was expected. And you can see here in the financials, we have a crack to the downside, okay? So you have a crack outside what was expected inside of the financials, okay? And when I start talking about things like bifurcations, okay, then we're gonna cruise over to none other than the XLE. Now the XLE, guess what, same animal. It looks like the exact same chart. The energy sector, also a very crack, small crack, if you will, to the downside, all right? Got it, get it, good, okay? Now, if we were to look at something like the QQQ, the NASDAQ, guess what, the exact opposite. You've actually got the NASDAQ that's literally cracked through the upper edge of the expected move. Okay, this is a little bit of turmoil in trade, but it's about sector rotation. And I mentioned this on a bunch of weekend videos. I look at this as a wild game of musical chairs, okay? And you're circling, and eventually this music plays, uh, you know, the, the music that's playing, it's going to stop. The sector rotation, okay? This has been persistent, but only for the last couple of weeks. The other thing, okay, that really resonates with me right now is that we are not in any way, shape, or form. We are not seeing correlation. Correlation is when you have 90 products to the downside, like 10 up. This is the S&P 100, or 90 stocks to the upside, 10 down. We're not correlated over here. We are a variable slop fest. If this marketplace starts to correlate, you are in big, big trouble. Now, again, net, net, I am carrying bearish positions. Again, net, net, I am carrying bearish positions at this point in time. That's important. I don't mind saying it. I especially don't mind saying it when the S&Ps themselves are down some 15 handles okay, in what's thought of to be one of the most wildly bullish marketplaces. Don't get me wrong. There are bullish areas in this marketplace. One of those happens to be, as I said, none other than Microsoft. But if you remember back okay, to just over a week ago, what did we do inside of Microsoft to protect ourselves? Again, I am carrying a short position in Microsoft. Here it is, in all of its glory, I'm carrying a short position. This is a deep in the money put, again, a deep in the money put. In fact, I'll actually cruise over here to Delta. I'm actually riding on about an 86 Delta. I've actually bounced this deep in the money put all the way out to the September. So by purchasing a deep in the money put, I'm synthetically short the stock. But at the exact same time, I'm like, man, I could take some heat in here. So what I also did, okay, is I went out and used a hedge just in case I was wrong. What kind of a hedge did I use? Ratio backspread, okay? Used a ratio backspread. In fact, if you would like to uh, see the ratio backspread, there's the closing bell and the spoos got whacked into the close. If you wanna see the ratio backspread, yeah, I didn't do just one of them. I loaded up a little bit here about a week ago on the ratio backspreads. And that ratio backspread, I sold the 185, okay? Bought uh, two of the 195.50s. That thing, if I wanted to exit it right now, was a 307 credit. I'm not exiting, I got 30 days left and I'm using it as a hedge. Bring it, and it means bring the risk. Nevertheless, okay, you've got this bifurcation going on and this game of musical chairs. You gotta be real careful over here because if you wake up and you see that advanced decline line, you know, at the opening bell, if that thing is correlated, look out, okay? And I'm gonna talk about the look out here in just a minute because as I said, all right, you know, the name of this video tonight, are you living on the bullish edge? And you're gonna find out real quick what that means if this thing starts to correlate. Okay, the next point that I would like to make, and again, I told you, I wanted to make just a handful of key points tonight. Next point that has to be made, defense is in play right now, okay? Being defensive is in play. When I talk about de being defensive, you may not see it because maybe you're looking at like the volatility futures. And I do absolutely look at the volatility futures and they've bit up in the last couple of days. Okay. It's not so much the volatility futures. It's not even so much the VIX. And yeah, the VIX is bit up here a little bit too. What do you have to look at? Bonds. At this point in time, I view the bonds starting to rally up okay, as being highly defensive. And it's the bonds right, rallying that are starting to actually whack the what? The financials. So bonds up, the financials getting killed. And the financials have moved. So goes the energy sector. And away we go. All right. So it's not just bonds. I think you also would probably have to look at gold. Gold looks ready to break the range to the upside.
Now, this is something I've talked about also extensively recently. I was uh, mentioning in this weekend's video that I was looking for a trade inside of gold. We put on a trade in gold. We actually bought premium okay, on both sides, on both sides of the marketplace in gold, looking for us to uh, ultimately crack outside of that range. All right. It's not just bonds. It's not just gold. Here's one that Hmm. Not everybody necessarily looks at it on a day-to-day -day basis, and yet you should. The VVIX. People, we are back into the VAMA zone. Anything north of 110 in the VVIX is serious. Okay, This is the professional world, and they are buying Okay, they are buying premium and hedging, and hedging in a very big way right now inside of the VVIX. All right, enough of that. So I think you guys get it, right? The Fed's out today doesn't do that much to the marketplace. The bifurcations are wild. Okay. You got to be extraordinarily careful here in point number three, because this marketplace really looks defensive. When professionals start to defend themselves, you need to be worried. Point number four that I want to make here, okay, relates to the SPX, the mother of all products, the SPX. Okay. Here's the problem that you have in the SPX. This is the expected move inside of the SPX. It's kind of ironic because you have tech, and the QQQ ripping to the upside. Then you have the XLF along with the financials diving to the downside. And the S&Ps literally are right smack in the middle. What's the problem with this? The problem with this, there's a whole lot of room for improvement. Okay. You should expect that we are going to rock higher or lower here considerably. I mean, right now you have almost $80 to go off of the upside or the downside of the expected move. All I'm telling you on this particular front, hey, this week's only got Thursday and Friday left. Get ready to rumble. This is going to be a wild two trading days, right? Uh, my belief is we're real close to seeing that correlation come back into play. And that's predicated on having watched, again, a lot of the sector rotation. And I'm telling you, the sector rotation got weak late in the day. We actually sold off a little bit inside of some of the monsters of tech. If you took a look at the uh, financials, I mean, the financials, people, they're, uh, they've really turned. I mean, that's a devastating move inside of the financials, uh, specifically inside of today's trade. Remember, on the weekend update, I was talking about the 2650 level. We are absolutely and definitively below that. Speaking of below that, take a look at the uh, the futures. We started this video. Where were we? Oh, somewhere up here at the uh, 3,200 level. Uh, we lost almost a full what 20 S and P points in the uh, in the last couple of moments. Okay, last point that I wanted to make. All right, had everything to do with when I was talking about you know are you living on the bullish edge? A lot of the stocks that I looked at on Monday, literally on Monday night's video, I was poking fun at stocks like Hertz. Do you realize this is a completely bankrupt company? They will eventually cancel the shares. And yet people are pumping, okay, hundreds of millions of dollars into a bankrupt company playing the game of chicken. You realize that eventually somebody ends up holding the bag. Hertz getting hammered since we mentioned it obviously on Monday, okay? American Airlines, okay, also taking it on the chin considerably, all right? What else do I have? Boeing. Okay, another stock that we brought up on Monday's video, huge reversals in there. Okay, last but not least, okay, we'll bring up Carnival, also taking a huge hit. I mean, if you didn't know any better, these all look like the exact same chart. Okay, if you're maintaining bullish positions in some way, shape, or form, people, you better define your risk. If you have a 401k, okay, you have an IRA, and there are, of course, bullish positions in there. Get that risk hedged. Get your hedges on people. That, okay, is going to be imperative moving forward. Nothing is clear to the future right now. Most companies, again, they don't even have guidance, okay, much less numbers to see where we're actually at economically. Now, I'm not a big fundamental trader. I am absolutely much more quantitative in my approach. Nevertheless, Having looked at these sector rotations day in and day out for the last couple of weeks, again, it looks like the music is about to stop. Thanks, everybody, for joining us here at Theo Trade. Have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye.